One of my favorite things in my math class that I started a couple of years ago was using math reflective journals. Now, these are a little bit different. If you've never used a reflective journal before in your math classroom, I hope that this video will help to convince you that maybe you should try some. Now, what is a math reflective journal? Well, a math reflective journal in the classroom is where at the end of the week, after you've done a whole week's worth of lessons, teaching a concept or a skill in your classroom, you ask your students to reflect on what they've learned, evaluate their progress according to the learning goal that you've stated, and provide some examples or evidence of the learning that they have achieved. Essentially, what you're creating is a self-directed test. You're allowing your students to share with you what it is they learned, show you their knowledge that they've gained, and give you a simple and easy tool to evaluate at the end of each and every week. It will help to give you some formative information that will let you know whether or not you're ready to move on or whether you've completely missed the boat. It will also allow you to help plan and structure your following week's guided math activities based on the skills and knowledge that students have identified that they have learned in the previous week. There is so much content that you can get out of a reflective journal that it simplifies your assessment. You're not needing to rely on tests or marking absolutely everything that students are doing. And you can get a quick snapshot of how your students are learning in mathematics at the end of every week, simply and easily. And because this is part of a new routine that you're going to establish in your classroom, Students get really comfortable and familiar after they've practiced this process a while that this just becomes the new normal and students are able to quickly and easily complete these in no time at all. My name is Patty and I'm a teacher here in Ontario, Canada, and every week we have a new episode of Teaching with Madly Learning. That's me, Madly Learning. And we have a new episode that talks all about teaching and learning in the junior grades. You can like and subscribe to this channel, and we would love to have your feedback on how you've enjoyed our videos here on the Madly Learning channel. If you want to learn more about Madly Learning, you can go to www.madlylearning.com. All right, so let's dig in. Math reflective journals. There's really three parts to a math reflective journal. One, it's reviewing the learning goal. Two, it's reflecting on what it is that they have learned. And three, it's showing evidence of that learning. It's very similar, if you think, in comparison to a reading response and how we would want our students to explain their comprehension. In a math reflective journal, we're really just asking our students to explain their understanding of math. Now, this is not a new concept. I haven't invented something new but it is something I really enjoy using in my math class. It saves on the amount of time I need to do testing. It saves on the amount of marking that I need to complete in a week, which is always going to be a bonus. Now, implementing a math journal is a bit of a process. It's often a brand new skill and task that students are being asked to do. So there is going to be some training and getting your students used to the process of using a math journal each and every week at the end of their learning period. So I really like to structure my math in week-long chunks where students are focused on one or two learning goals in a week that they're going to work on to accomplish. So that is why the math journal here is for me a week-long process. At the beginning of the week, it starts with setting the intention of the week. What is it that your students are going to be learning? What is going to be the goal that you want them to be able to have learned by the end of the week? If you're teaching about using multiplication strategies, this goal may be, I will know how to competently use one to two multiplication strategies to solve two digit by one digit multiplication questions. Now, if that is the goal, then all week long, you're going to be teaching your students different skills about how to multiply two digit by one digit questions in their math classroom. You're going to be needing throughout the week to be referencing after a lesson you've taught, you know, how does this reflect our goal? You're going to have to be doing a lot of modeling about what it means to reflect, what it means to self-evaluate and how we show evidence of our learning. So as you're implementing this process, there's a lot of support and a lot of modeling and walking through this process with students. I would actually recommend you do the math reflective journal 
with students as a modeled and shared activity for the first couple of weeks until students begin to see the routine and how it works inside a classroom. So again, you start by laying your intention and expressing to your students what the learning goal is. Now you want to post this somewhere and you want to reference it at the beginning of every single class. Now, this is going to be something that you want students to begin to be thinking about what they're going to be writing. They know at everything you're teaching them in the week is going to be asked about at the end of the week. In fact, you can give them the reflective journal page or template. They can begin it on Monday. When you introduce the learning goal, students can write down in their journal what the learning goal is. Then throughout the week, you're going to do some teaching and practicing and reflecting throughout the week. You're going to model that reflection piece. You're going to ask students to think about what they could write in their journal after the lesson today, what it is they've learned. Students can also take this opportunity to take notes because if they know that they're going to be accountable for this reflective journal at the end of the week, taking notes throughout the week after a lesson, reflecting on what they've done during the week, being accountable to that, that may also help students to stay focused on what it is they're learning. It gives sort of a framework for why it is that we are learning the things we're learning and what they're going to do with it, just in the short term. Long term, they're going to use it for lots of different things, but short term, they need to listen to the lesson because they're going to have to prove they learned something at the end of the week. Now, as we're going through the week and we're hinting to students throughout the week, you know, this is what we're doing. How are you feeling? All that social, emotional math pieces that we really want to build in. This is another piece that's going to come into our reflective journal. Now, when we get to the end of the week, this is when I give my students time to really reflect on what it is they've learned. What was our learning goal? Okay, so we've written that down. They should know by now because you've hammered it over them. It's written down. You've referenced it. They know exactly what it is you've been focusing on this week and what you're wanting them to accomplish in their learning by the end of the week. Now, do they have to get there? No, they don't. But you want them to identify if they did or not. So at the end of the week, I present them with three questions. What was our learning goal? What did you learn? How can you prove it? Now, these three questions, students probably have already answered the first one. Maybe we let them do that on the first day when we introduce the learning goal. The second one is going to be a piece of writing. They're going to reflect throughout the week on what they did. What did you learn? What did you try? What was difficult? I like to give my students a few question prompts or sentence stems to help them think about this. It doesn't have to be in a paragraph and be nice. But even if they have it in a list of different things that they've learned, different concepts, maybe when they were learning multiplication strategies, they really liked the partial product strategy. They did not like the box method. Maybe there was a partial product strategy. They liked to write it with like lines and arrows versus a list. That's a really good piece of information for them to be reflective on. When I was learning multiplication, my teacher showed me two different ways to use the partial product to write out partial product in my notebook. That one didn't make sense to me, but this one does. Or I really liked using the box method, or I found the box method terribly confusing and I just want to use the standard algorithm. Or I found the standard algorithm really confusing. And this is where I really need to think about why I want to use that. Or my mom and dad tell me that's what I have to use, but I really don't like that one very much really talking about their ideas, what they're learning. It's a written piece about how they have learned throughout the week, what they struggled with. This is also a place where I really like to use my stoplight system, which is four lights, not three. Well, my stoplight system of self-evaluation. Are they red, where they really need a lot of support? Are they yellow, where they need some support to work through the concepts that they're taught? Is it green? I'm good to go. I might make a few errors here and there, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. Or blue. I am super confident. I know exactly what to do. I think this stuff is easy. Depending on where they are, this is a really great place for them to really reflect on that and explain to you what their learning process that week was, what worked, what didn't work, so on and so forth. Now, I find that piece really important because I want to have some insight into how they're talking to themselves about math 
what they're thinking about math and how I can help support them, what they're struggling with, what's working for them. It gives me some insight as a teacher for when I do a guided math instruction, what kind of strategies might work for them, what commonalities they may have with other students in the classroom. It might give me some ideas of how I could pair students the following week. So it really gives me some insights into how they're approaching math because then I can make decisions as a teacher from that point of view. Now, the next one is the proof. So the third section of their math journal is proof. Now, this is really important because they can say all day long that they understand everything, but you actually want them to prove it. Now, this is an important part too. They're going to design their own question to prove it. And you might want to encourage them to do one to two questions so that they get a bit more variety. So if you are asking them to reflect on their learning about multiplication strategies, you want them to put in two multiplication strategies that they can solve. Now, this is going to tell you a lot of information as a teacher. Are they choosing simple and easy questions that they can do? Are they choosing to challenge themselves in their math journal to show their thinking? Are they using larger numbers? Are they using more complex strategies? Or are they just using one, two, and three? So are they doing 12 times three? Or are they doing 97 times eight? Looking at where your students might be, we all know that students are going to probably struggle with 12 times three, or they're going to not struggle so much with 12 times three versus 97 times eight. So you really want to see the type of question that they're going to give to themselves and allow them to really push their thinking because it's going to give you some insight as to how comfortable and confident they are in attacking these different types of math questions. It also gives you some topics of conversation when you are working or conferencing with students and asking them why they're taking the easy road and gives you opportunities to push your students to take more risks and really develop that social emotional confidence when it comes to the math classroom. Now, to successfully implement a math journal really does take practice, practice, practice. It is not a procedure or a routine in your classroom that's going to magically happen overnight. It will take quite a few weeks to model that process with your students, have them do it with lots of support before they become routine. But if you're willing to put in that time and you're willing to allow your students to take the easy road, not do a great job a couple of times, give them the feedback to improve and really support them along the way. It's very powerful what you're actually able to get in the back end of going through that struggle initially to get them to follow this process. As with all things teaching, whenever we teach a new concept, it's always a struggle at first to get our students up to speed as to where they need to go. But for me, math journals were really a game changer, allowing me a lot of insight, a lot of assessment data into where my students were. It allowed me to not rely quite so much on culminating activities to really generate all of my marks. It gave me a ton of formative assessment so that I knew exactly where my students were when we did those final projects and when we did those final tests, if we did them, it gave me some insight. I knew exactly where my students were. And that amount of formative assessment is gold. Way more information than we would ever get by simply marking a worksheet, yes or right. So hope this is giving you some food for thought. If you're interested in seeing how to integrate math journals into your regular math program, I invite you to join us at www.ignitedmath.ca and learn more about a comprehensive math program that will last all year long. Thanks so much. Bye for now.